Whole genome sequencing has only recently become feasible at scale, but now the technology has matured, the medical community is using it to study and help diagnose some of the most debilitating rare diseases. Genomics England has been leading this research through the sequencing of over 100,000 participants' genomes. We went to find out more. I have a site condition called retinitis pigmentosa, which is an inherited disease. There's a particular gene affected in my family. Um, it basically means that I have, I started off with no night vision, then peripheral vision started closing in. When Andy's eyesight started to change when he was a child, Nobody knew really what to do about it. The GP prescribed me vitamin A tablets and it did nothing. Um, coming from a good Lancashire family, somebody brought in some holy water from Lourdes. That didn't do anything. So um, I ended up uh, going to the hospital in Manchester. It didn't stop him from getting a degree or a good job. But all the while, Andy persisted in his search for a definitive diagnosis. And when he had children, there was a worry about whether he could pass a condition on. In 2013, he and his family signed up for a programme called the 100,000 Genomes Project, run by Genomics England. And they got an answer. Not only did it confirm Andy's retinitis pigmentosa, they know his daughter Margaret carries it too, and she could pass it on. Genomics England was set up in 2013 as a government-run company to bring the benefits of genomic medicine to everybody. It starts by using so-called genetic sequencing to help people identify what condition they might have. So these are the genome sequencing machines that um, that you put the, the DNA in and it spends 24, 48 hours reading through the sequence of the genome. The, the DNA has been cut up into lots of little fragments and it, for each of those fragments that's in the machine it's doing a little readout of that section of the genome. Taking the readout of all of those different bits you can put it together and work out what the whole three billion letter code of the whole genome is, the best readout you can get of it. And then you can work out how you zoom in on the bits that are relevant to that person's problems. It's incredible, isn't it? It's inspiring. It's changed so much in the last 10 or 15 years from it being genuinely unimaginable that you could sequence someone's genome to help their healthcare. It was, you know, science, it was almost science fiction that you could do it at all. And suddenly it's something that we can actually sit in clinic and say to families that you can do. And how does that make you feel? Lucky really lucky to, that, we're, that we're alive at this time when you know, there's such progress and there's lots, there's lots left to do, but we're at a time where there's enormous progress being made. Genomics England is arguably where research and healthcare meet. Researchers get the case studies they need to help find the answers they're looking for, and then the NHS can take advantage of this by using the developments from the researchers to help treat their patients. It's thought to be the first instance of genome sequencing being used as a routine part of healthcare. Part of the founding principles of the NHS is around equity of access and um, you know, free at the point of care. And for us, when we talk about bringing the benefits of genomic medicine to everyone, that word everyone is hugely important and the partnership with the NHS allows that to really come to life. The implications of doing this at scale are huge because we can start to deliver on that vision of a health service which is predictive and preventative rather than coming in and treating sickness, we can get ahead of it. And that means that we can start to understand more and more on the basis of what's in someone's genome, what's likely to go wrong with them, if they're sick, what that is, and which medicines will start to work with them. So we can really help people in England and the UK focus on wellness rather than sickness. Although a diagnosis in Andy and Margaret's case doesn't mean a cure, there is one thing they now have. That's certainty. How has this diagnosis affected you in terms of the decisions that you may well make in your life? It's given me a sort of bigger sense of responsibility. It's not affected whether I want children or not, I'm, I still do. It's more so 
made me think further about how I go about it and what the actual right decisions would be, not for me, but for my future children. Genomics England are extending their screening from everything, from COVID to cancer. They're even exploring the potential for routine testing at birth. And above all, they're listening to people like Andy and his daughter to hear all the different views out there on how this technology can be most useful. And that means even if we may not know all the answers today, as soon as they do come, everybody will be ready.